Captain Mike from Forbes Fishing, and I'm here at the AC Boat Show with Joe Papperman, uh, Papperman Yachts. And Joe, we are on the 39 Yellowfin. Beautiful boat you have here. This is an awesome boat, man. It's actually one of my favorite center consoles. Hey, would you mind taking us through uh, a walkthrough of all the features and benefits of this Yellowfin? Of course, man. Let's check it out. This one has specifically been built with forward seating. With this forward seating, you obviously have storage beneath, but we also have electric actuators for these backrests. So it's not an extra part you have to actually carry around with you if you did want to have a weight lounge up here, whether you're heading to the sandbar, cruising to dinner, uh, you got the family on board. Just one less part you have to actually deal with moving on and off the boat. Then obviously the storage underneath. Joe, I really like how the handles are molded in uh, under the lid. On my boat, the handles are under the cushion, so not only if the cushions are off, they fill with water, but they're just, you know, more difficult to get to. Yeah, it definitely helps out with getting that little bit of finger pull. Um, it's obviously a lot more difficult to build it that way, rather than having the mold go straight off. There's a little bit more fairing that's involved mm -hmm. and tooling, but just one of those little extra touches that you'll notice with a uh, higher-end center console. So you can see we've got some dock ropes in here and some power cords at the moment. but And that's fully open all the way to the bow. That's a pretty big space. Yes, sir, it is. So there's actually also additional shelf back behind here. So oh, wow. if you needed to store some additional light jackets, that's another spot you can tuck them in. Obviously with this real wide gunnel, it allows you to have that additional space. So this being a three-piece boat, you have that extra... Geez, that is super wide. That's got to be about 18 inches wide here. So obviously with this yellowfin, there's a significant amount of bow flare that uh, allows that for it. That's part of the reason why it has the ride that it has. So Joe, what do we have for uh, anchor for the anchor locker? We've got a windlass on this boat, or is it uh, order? So this boat does not have a windlass. Okay. It simply has a standard anchor locker that you could put your fortress style anchor in there. There is a bracket to be able to hold it. Yep. Um, some of our customers that never anchor up and only troll or chunk don't really worry about having a, a windlass with an anchor roller that goes through the stem, but they could have that on the specific boat. Okay. So you actually have up here, if we didn't do forward seating, we could have done a coffin box as well. Um, in this specific configuration, I kind of enjoy having your in-deck box. This thing is huge, sure. and it is lockable. So, these are slam catches. Holy cow! Yeah, <laughs> that's huge. It's big, man. If you're going to go <laughs> offshore and you're going to put a hurting on the fish, you got to have somewhere to put them. Holy cow, is that big. Now this boat also has a bow thruster, and you can see where nothing's infringing on that right now. Yep. There actually is a soft patch underneath that anchor right now if they need to get to it. Yeah, I see that. Yep. And on either side, port and starboard, again locking, we have additional storage. And these are quite long as well. They actually go way up here. You can see yeah, there's a shanty mop in here at the moment. So if I shove that all the way up before it comes undone, sorry about that. Holy cow. Yeah, nice yeah that's, to be able to shoot, that's a seven foot mop, <laughs> mop handle. Yes, sir. So another cool thing you'll see with any of these, um, specifically on the yellow fin, you have the black matting on the backside, just help out with any sort of sound, or if you did have any fish flopping around, helps give it a nice smooth finish. And that is the gasket too, right? Correct, that helps out on that on that edge. And the yellow fin likes to use slam latches. So these are from Gemlux, but if you can hear it, that's when it get it grabs, and there is no turn. It's just popping yeah. that up to get it to come undone. You also notice all the edges are actually finished. Um, a lot of your mid-tier and lower-tier boats will just cut that off and you'll see the all glass. glass. It's perfectly that's fine, but it's yep. just one of those little extra steps you'll see. Yeah, the lids on my boat, the underside of it, I mean, they cut them off, but then they uh, hit them with a gel coat paintbrush. <laughs> so, What's that one? You do have one more additional one up here. And again, that extends pretty far forward as well. Mm -hmm. Just one more spot. You never have enough storage on no, the boat, absolutely not. center console. Absolutely. I know there, there is quite a large gutter system that actually goes out all around each gutter, continues on, and then pushes out to be able to push any water, whether if you did take some water over the bow. 
uh, rain, if you're trying to clean stuff out. But again, mainly just trying to keep those hatches dry. Yeah, that's neat. Um, you know, I have little drains in the corners of mine where the gutter is only specific to that lid, and it's always cruddy under there, especially when you don't open, yeah. open that lid uh, all that much. So it is definitely a different style I'm looking to it, but this is what's tried and true and works, and sometimes simpler is a little bit better on a big sports fish boat. Uh, Joe, something that catches my attention uh, that I wish my boat had. Uh, when we go out, when we go offshore, like for a canyon trip, you never have enough rod holders, and you, you end up bringing your trolling spread, you bring big spinners, you bring little spinners, you bring pretty much half of your garage worth of fishing gear. And on a center console, the value is that you can fish around the boat. Uh, but if you have rods in every rod holder, you're sitting there trying to work around each one of them. Having rod holders here on the, you know, this forward seat is a big benefit, you know, center of the boat. Definitely nice. You'll see this with a lot of brands now doing the cup holder, rod holder combo. That way if you are lounging, going yeah. to dinner, again, you got the family or you're just hanging out up here, you got a spot you can put your drink. But you can still around. hold a rod there. I mean, it's, it's, you're not fishing out of those. It's not like you're trolling. It doesn't have to be as uh, well supported as a gunnel rod holder. For sure. It'd be a nice spot to put some vent butts, put your uh, deep drop rods. Absolutely. And just keep it out of the way of the, you know, the business end of everything's going on. So. Up here in this forward seat, this could be optional to be an additional live well. We specifically did not on this boat, but you could definitely use this mm -hmm. as an additional drink box, especially since it has a drain to it. Yeah. And I assume everything drains overboard on this boat? Yes, sir. So we'd either go to a go to a pump or we'd go directly overboard. Okay. Nothing to the village. Very good. I like how the uh, windshield is integrated into this uh, de-extrusion de uh, tubing. Very clean looking. It's a nice clean look. You don't have any of those you know, T-top feet on the ground, everything's on the console, yep. so it keeps you from stubbing your toe. Uh, just a real nice little touch. Now we do have covers for all of this, that way you don't have to mess with anything when you do leave the boat. Mm -hmm, it makes mm -hmm. life easy. And this is a huge, huge, huge it oversized sure, T-top. It sure is. Uh, that T-top, this hard top, I mean, you could you could probably see it here. It goes to the very beginning of the cockpit combing. It's got to be every bit of eight, nine feet wide. The nice thing is, you can never have enough shade when you're offshore. No, definitely. So that definitely helps out a bunch. Joe, what's this? We so got more storage? We have matching ones on each side. These both tip out. So you could use this as another storage yeah. location. Um, but this also helps you get to any of your fuel fills, which we have on both sides. So if you did pop that both of these out, you could access that rigging, that tubing, without having some sort of soft patch or anything else of that matter. Um, up here as well, with this being a three-piece boat, you see I have a giant toe kick. If I'm fighting a fish, I can get right up against here. I'm mm -hmm. not losing anything. And if you did want to add additional rod holders, it's very easy to do since everything's accessible. Now, the factory rod holders, are they, uh, do they have drain hose plumbed on them? So in locations where it's necessary, yes. If it's going to go directly to the cockpit, you can see further aft, there's no reason. Yeah, yeah, uh, yep. You know, all Gemlux hardware. We do have pop-up cleats, so if you are you know, fishing the boat, you can pop these things back down as one less thing for your line to grab onto or for yourself to grab. Um, if you look closely over here, there's actually divots in the mold that if you needed to put maybe dive tanks or something of the like, this is a great spot to put them. Yeah, it's interesting. On this specific boat, we have a, a raw water and a fresh water wash down midship on both boats with coil hose with a rack for it just to keep it off the ground. Just one of those things that make it nice. This can easily reach up to the bow or the stern of the boat. And this is the fill for fresh water? That's your fresh water fill, correct. Okay, excellent. Correct. So again, you can see with this console, we have another tow kick. So if I'm fighting a fish and someone needs to get by me, the gaff man, the net man, I don't know, maybe we're hooked up to another one, we're fighting a quad, a double, a triple, whatever it may be. You got I love when that happens. That's the best, that's what we're looking for, right? Yeah. And landed them. <laughs> so, this is going to be a little bit different on either side of the boat. We're currently on the starboard side. But to take up some of this additional space and use as much storage as we can, we have what's called a set of Mitchell boxes. So, this is basically just another set of uh, Plano box storage mm -hmm. in a uh, PVC style material or AZAC material starboard. Mm -hmm. And even better, you can, this is one of my favorite things on the boat. Garbage can. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You always need a trash can. So that's removable. But again, just one of those soft little features that you, 
might not see or might not notice. A couple things as we're looking up. Again, this is all finished and polished, the bottom side of the hard top, so it's easy to maintain and wax and keep clean. Absolutely like glass. We also have molded in spreader lights on port and starboard. I don't know if you saw up front, but there's one forward. Yep. And we also have one on the half side as well. But that, yeah, I bet this lights up the nut lights up the dark here. Yeah. Sure does. That way if you're on that night chunk or coming in to, coming in late after slaying the fish. Uh Gemlux uh, riggers? Of course. He is obviously if you left hand turn it's going to loosen it's actually going to lower that rigger down right hand's going to push it up but even furthermore once you pop this down and over you can actually twist the whole rigger out see that out there. yep so again you don't have to jump up on the gunnel no everything's all done from this one piece and carbon fiber they're probably pretty light yes sir they are so i'm just trying to be gentle with it right now but definitely makes life a lot easier absolutely up there absolutely so this boat specifically, you know, we have not put electronics in it. It's open to whatever the next buyer would like to do. You can easily do a Garmin package, a Simrad package. If you wanted to do some sort of Ray Marine, maybe put Seatronics displays in and mix it up with a Furuno setup with your Garmin. You have plenty of options there. Now, so, Joe, for, with all those options, some of those are factory options? You can, some... can do it from the factory. Okay. Uh, I like to do it with, a, you know, a local branch, such as Charthouse Marine Electronics. Um, they can help you out as far as laying this out. Again, you can do, you know, options are endless. So there is a Mercury Vessel View display that comes with this. It's not currently cut in. Occasionally we'll see it down low, depending on where you want to put it. Put it in your main displays, where you can put it even overhead here as well. So there is a set of 12 volt outlets up there. If you mm -hmm. need to put a spotlight or cell phone, something to charge up there. And again, you have that recessed electronics locker as well. So since you are going to be you know, with the step tall, triple V10, 400 mercuries on it, this boat runs. So you do have grab handles in all sorts of locations, including up here, but this makes it nice and easy. If you're on the troll or you're in some bad weather, I can mess with my displays and actually have something to hold on to rather than just leaning up. Yeah, there. it's a good point. It's really hard to interact with your screen, a uh, touch screen uh, when you're bouncing around. And certainly the waters that we have off in New Jersey, it's often rough. It occasionally happens there. So. Um, Another cool thing up here, I have my trim tabs set up, my bow thruster control, my binnacle control, and a set of cup holders. But again, we are wide open to do whatever it is we'd like to do up here. Nice foot rest, molded in foot rests. Yep, so for a short guy like me, I can uh, lean up against my bolster. I can see just fine. When I run this boat, these V10 400s, that bow comes right up to the rise and then right off. You don't get blinded in this specific boat. These, these so, outboards are bad to look. So, Joe, I'm, I'm holding the camera right now at approximately where your eyes were yep. when you were leaning up. Uh, just so that people know perspective, how tall are you? About 5'8", five, 5'9", five, depending on which convenience store I'm leaving. <laughs> That's good. So we had plenty, and I guess the point there is, uh, I've, I've been on so many boats where this set, the, the helm station, the, the center console station, is just so tall that you can't see over it. And yep. when you hit the gas, that's gonna, you know, your bow's gonna come up higher, and it's just very difficult to see. But we have, uh, I'm holding it now at my height, I'm, I'm right at six foot, and the visibility I have is just incredible. Again, for me, when I ran this boat, getting up on plane, it came right up to about my eyesight, right back off. You know, I wasn't sitting there for 10 seconds with my bow up in the air, which is awesome. I really love these V10 burgers and the badass. Joe, uh, uh, triple wide captain seats, which I'm a super fan of. My next boat is absolutely going to be triple wide. What I find interesting is many of the triple wides that I see don't have the armrest on the center for the center seat. Yep, and again, this is just another little uh, little touch. We actually have the beam to do it, so you might as well. Yeah, absolutely. Things that if you got your captain running, I can sit here and I can do my own thing. I can tuck myself in, and if I do it right, I can probably even take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Just so. what I like, my crew sleeping. What do we have under? Uh... So this is access to your batteries. Yep. Again, makes things easy for when you do need to maintain them or take them out. All of our main uh, breaker panels, you might not be able to see it from your side. So um, one one per motor and one house? Is that what we have? In this scenario, Three. yes. Okay. And then this obviously has a uh, set of chargers for your shore power side as well. Yep. And then if you can see, you do have your breakers for your electric grill outlets. This boat has a total of four. 
so you can run dredges, deep drop reels, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Uh, I see more batteries in the back. Is there there? It could yeah, very well be a, a few extra. The back there. I'd imagine uh, probably two house and one per, per motor. Yep. That's probably how this one's set up. So, no, if, um, if a customer selected a sea keeper, it's a DC sea keeper, right? Correct. Where would the power, would the battery maybe be under there as well for that? Or? That is a great question. I would like to think it would be as close to the sea keeper as possible to reduce any sort of voltage drop. Um, one of the nice things with these newer outboards is these high output alternators to help keep those batteries charged up throughout the day. Why are you so It looks like we have more storage on my side. Sure do. <laughs> Both sides have that as well. So we got the same thing duplicated, and these are the bigger planar boxes? Yep. Again, the cool thing with having this hinged piece, you're not stuck with a big door flopping in the breeze. Yep. You can hold that back and get to what you need to get to. Unfortunately, most of the time when you need this stuff, it's in a pinch, and you're rushing, and it's taking a lot, you know, time is of the essence. Yeah, so, for sure. If you look up underneath, we have a set of uh, rack storage, so if you want to put gifts. Yep, with uh, real padding for your reels to yep. protect them from beating up on the... Yep, and if you look up tight, there'll be a Hubble reel outlet up there as well. Yep. And that's one of the four. Then the other one's going to match on the opposite side. We do have the combing cushions as well, again, just making everything nice and soft for you. And on the starboard side, we do have a, uh, a gate for the door. Yeah, I like how uh, two things I really like about this. It folds in. Uh, because when you're up against a dock, who needs it to fold out, right? Yep. There's a couple manufacturers uh, that are still doing a fold out, which I know is easier to do, but less useful. But then doing the two-piece, you're able to put cockpit combing on the on the top. And so when we're fishing, we have a nice soft surface that's right. to lean up against. So that's really cool. Those are some massive hinges there. There's a lot, of, lot going on here. So yeah. We don't want anything rattling. We want everything to be as nice, tight seal as we can. Is that a fish box, Jeff? So, yep, so we get we have these on port and starboard. And this will go to a gulper pump. My favorite. My viewers uh, saw my video of swapping out the macerators for gulpers. They're just way more reliable. So, back here along the transom, there's going to be your uh, power steering. Yep, power, power assist steering pumps. Excellent. Another hubble outlet. Yep. To go with a swivel rod holder. And here's the deck drains you were talking about that uh, everything funnels into, right? Yep. And those are actually threaded. So if you did need to open those up for some reason, if you had a clog of some sort, you can't get back to those. You have to take the whole thing back out. Very cool. Joe, you know what I uh, have to comment on? They're, they're just gorgeous. These uh, no fastener rod holders. Ken Lux does a great job. Boy, they're just beautiful. So clean looking. So we got our transom live wall here. Additional rod holders along the transom, two of which are cup holder rod holders. This is a pressurized live well, so you can see our gasket and there are two overflow drains. So that way, you know, some guys will cut a notch here to let it flow overboard. That's all well and good, uh, but this just gives you yeah, no, that works. Try to try to get little as little water on deck as possible, especially with these pressurized systems. So, so the others, you know, we have a matching fish box, matching racks under the combing. Matching three power assists. Yep. Same thing with the Hubble outlets. Um, so we've pretty much seen everything over there. One thing we didn't see over on the side. This is our rowing box. So instead of having, you know, the last one we saw, we had three individual setups: mm -hmm. one for the trash can and two Plano box storage. So this is just one big. Yeah, so that's nice. Great spot to put spreader bars, um, additional knock lines, mm -hmm. anything that's just big and long and awkward that you may not have a spot to put. Very nice. So I'm going to hop down. All right. Might be if you grab that side. Uh, so Joe, we already saw at the helm there's no electronics, which, uh, uh, but looking back into this cavity here, there is so much room and so much accessibility. I mean, anything you put back here is going to be really easy to maintain. And I'm looking, I'm looking down now, and I'm thinking to myself at first, well, how, do, how would I get to that stuff? There's another door here. Yes, sir. 
you could get to everything. Wow. This is, yeah, so this is prepped for electronics. There is already a transducer mm -hmm. in here. I believe it's an Airmar 309. So, Joe, I'm, uh, I'm six foot tall. I'm going to say there's another six inches over my head, so we're probably like six six in here. Plenty of standing room. And then get your, your head system. Mm -hmm. Which again, we can do it. And this has a holding tank? Correct. Holding tank, or we could go directly overboard, or you get pumped out of from your deck side. Well, back here in the cockpit, I guess the only couple things we didn't discuss. Uh, obviously, we have a ton of rod holders, rocket launcher style off the back of our hard top. Mm -hmm. Another set of cup holders back here at the aft end. And they're, and they're reachable, too. Yep. And you have your center one, it's at a slightly different angle if you wanted to use this. It's almost like a center rigger, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, that way you get a little bit better angle for that rod tip itself if it's actually being fished. We do have additional cup holders up here, which, can you ever have enough rod holders or cup holders? <laughs> now you don't. And then right here, we have even more tackle storage. Oh, that's wonderful. Again, nice and easy to get to. Yep. And we have one more live well here under the mezzanine seat. Oh, it's huge. Oh, the yeah. entire length. Wow. I assume that could, people could also use that for drinks. You, could use, you certainly could. Yeah, it's certainly could. So this last hatch here is for our lazarette. It's going to get us to our mechanical space, pumps, our sea chest. Wow, I really like how the hoses are marked. Yep, everything's, so you, everything's labeled that's in here, whether it's a electronic or any sort of plumbing. The valves are marked. The pump is marked. Holy cow. We've got two bilge pumps. We've got two live well pumps. From that sea chest. From yep. that sea chest. With a high speed pickup. We have uh, two gulper groupers down here. My favorite pumps. Yeah, for your fish boxes. I got my uh, water separators, I guess. Your sea strainers? Sea strainers? No, these, no, these are fuel water separators. I apologize. Okay. I thought we were looking at sea strainers. And then you have a reverso system down there as well. Oh, <laughs> wow. I, um, Joe, I made one for my boat. It's, it's a, I, well, I can't really call it a full reverso, yep. but I plumbed hoses through the rigging tubes and tied it into the inside of the motors yep. and put a uh, single hose hook up here with a switch. It's definitely one nice way to do it with this reverso. Basically, it changes from each motor for you, especially in a three-motor situation. You might not have enough pressure if you're going to wire it off like you did for yourself. Most docks won't which is why I needed to switch on mine. Uh, people yeah. talk about doing Y hoses, but uh, unless you're at your own private dock by yourself, you're, I promise you're not gonna have the water pressure to do that. Yep. I've tried. So, trip 400s on this boat? Correct, these are the new V10 400s. These things are bad to the bone. Now you've run this boat, right? I have run this boat, and it's my favorite <laughs> center console right now. Now, the motors you... are definitely part of that, but the way it's developed with this bottom, this mm -hmm. step tall bottom, we were able to just shoot out of the hole, the sun it before as far as that bow rise came up, came up right to the horizon, right back down. Uh, these things are bad. You have to instant torque through all RPM ranges. Again, these are a naturally aspirated motor as opposed to the previous L6 version with a supercharger. These things are bad to the bone. I don't think I can say that enough times. So uh, we have trips on here now, and obviously they're Mercury's. Is there Yamaha options as well? You, could. you can do Yamaha okay. now, the 450s. Okay. Um, you, know, you could do a quad setup as well if you chose to, um, but the 1,200 horsepower is plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine this thing scoots. Joe, it's a beautiful boat. I know you're going to have a lot of interest here at the AC show. Is this boat available? This boat is available right now. You can have this for the 24 season. If we can put a deal together soon, we'll have plenty of time to put the electronics of your choice in. We'll get you out there for that uh, late spring bike. And Joe, how would uh, how would people find you? So you can find me a few different ways. You can find me at Papperman Yachts on all social media platforms. You can contact South Jersey Yacht Sales at SouthJerseyYachtSales.com. Um, so my, my email is jpapperman at sjys.com. Hit me up on uh, social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I might be missing a few. At <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're uh, too young to remember MySpace. I did have a MySpace. Did you? I did have a MySpace. <laughs> yeah, but I had my top eight. <laughs> right. Joe, thank you very much. Beautiful boat. 
Yeah. Best of luck with it. Best of luck at the show. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Thank you. Watching. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and tight minds.